and she was under the influence of something. I, I don't know what it was. And we were having a one of those spiritual, philosophical debates and conversations. But in the midst of that, I noticed something that even though she was in the state that she was, the word of God was in her and never left her. And because of that, over these past few years, 32 years, I have watched her develop, I've watched her grow naturally, but to her naturally and spiritually. And now, instead of being a person who wants to debate the word of God, she now defends it and declares it. So what I want you to do, I want you to stand on your feet as we bring forth our speaker, Pastor Tavian Harris. That God will have his word on the God bless you. is increased in the land. And we're going to go to chapter 2. Verse 2 says, about verse 1 says, chapter 2, Job chapter 2, verse 1. And again was the day when the sons of God came 
to present themselves before the Lord. And Satan came among them and presented himself to the Lord too. Here he was again another day showing himself before God. Coming in with the saints of God, it sounds to me like Satan would come into the house of God even when the saints of God was coming into the house of God. Then he goes on to say, he says, And the Lord said unto Satan, where are you coming from, devil? And he said, Satan answered the Lord and said, From going to and fro in the earth and from walking up and down in it, and the Lord said unto Satan, Has thou considered my servant Job? After everything the enemy put Job through in chapter 1, here he comes again. And he said that there is none like him in the earth, a perfect and upright man, one that feareth God and escheweth evil, and still holdeth fast his integrity. Although thou movest me against him to destroy him without cause. Let us go over to Job 20. Verse 14 says, Yet his meat in his bowels is turned, and the gall of ass within him. He has swallowed down riches and he shall vomit them up again. God shall cast them out of his belly. If you will, look at a neighbor and say, I'm not gonna quit. Turn to another neighbor and say, you please don't let me quit. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you. I thank you for today, God. Um, now, Father, as I decrease in every bit of flesh, I ask the anointing to be upon me, God, um, to shift your people, God, uh, so that we won't quit in this hour, that we won't give up, uh, God, that we won't turn back. Uh, God, I thank you right now uh, for your anointing today. Uh, Father, we bind every spirit uh, of backlash and retaliation. Uh, we come against every spirit uh, that would hinder this word from going forth. Uh, we come against everything uh, that would pluck up the seed. Uh, God, we lose your spirit. Uh, have your way in this service, God. Uh, have your way in our heart. Uh, God, we just say thank you. Uh, thank you for this word. Uh, I'm not gonna quit. Uh, you may be seated. He kind of about shot. I don't know who this word is for. I don't know what you're going through. All I know is you can't quit in this hour. You see in Job the second chapter, Job starts out by saying that, that the enemy went and showed himself to God. And he came to present himself. Now talking about the enemy, the problem is, is that we wasn't taught to estimate our enemy. You see the enemy, the devil, Satan, uh, he's crafty uh, he's been in places uh, that we as saints of God had never went, uh, he's been in places uh, that we don't know about, uh, but we've got to and not underestimate the enemy, uh, you see in chapter 4, um, verse 12 through 21, um, we see that there was a spirit um, that entered into this text uh, and when you get a chance, I want you to go back and you want you to read it uh, because when you look at this story of Job. Uh, he was a man that served God. Uh, how many of you have been serving God uh, with all that's in you? Uh, and you've been hanging on uh, with all that's in you. Uh, but he was a man uh, that loved God. Uh, he put God before everything. Uh, he loved God with all of his heart. Uh, but yet uh, the enemy attacked him. We have to be careful, saints of God. That we don't underestimate the devil. Especially in a season where he's hiding behind so many satanic things. So when we get into chapter, tw chapter 20, we're entering in with 
the gentleman by the name, one of Job's friends, is, his name is Zophar. And Zophar, the name Zophar literally means chirping. Means a person who's always talking. Got something to say. I'm going to call Brother Zophar Brother Z. You see, Brother Z was one of those super pseudo Christians who always had a word from God. I'm going somewhere with this. You know, he'll, he'll start out by saying, uh, I don't mean to be messy. I, 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 I feel in my spirit that this is what God is saying. And I feel the Lord has a word from you. And um, I don't mean to hurt you. But uh, you see, Brother Z was one of them people who would judge you too quickly. Verse 3 in chapter 20 says, I, and here's what he says. He said, I heard a check in my, of my reproach and I can't bear it any longer. You have to beware of people who will judge you by your circumstance and not by what God is saying about your life. You see, Brother Zophar proceeds right on to the ruin and the destruction of, the, of Job and calling him wicked and insinuating that he was in sin and he was even called the man a hypocrite. But I'm here to tell you that, Brother Zophar, I don't know where you at, but you may not be in the fight right now, huh? but just keep living. Sooner or later, you're going to be in a fight for your life. But the problem to me, saints of God, was that Brother Zophar could not identify nor discern what God was doing in Job's life. And when a person cannot identify or discern what God is doing in your life, they will mishandle you. They will misjudge you. They will underestimate you. They will under value you um, and they will form wrong opinions about your life hallelujah didn't any of these three friends have the spirit of discernment what I find out uh, is that you can have doctrine but you may not have discernment you can have revelation but you may not have discernment. You can have a prayer life and it's messed up when you're praying every day and have no discernment. You see, people cannot figure out, saints of God, uh, why you still come in the church and why you've lasted this long and how come you still praising God and they thought you would have lost your mind by now. Uh, they thought you would have given up on God and turned your back and gone back to the drug house and gone back into sin. Uh, but there's something down on the inside uh, that won't let you let go. I'm here to tell you today that I don't care what you going through. I don't care what you up against. I don't care what it looks like. It ain't over till God says it's over. And baby, don't you quit. Don't judge me by what I'm going through. Don't judge me by what it looks like. Don't judge me by my circumstances. Don't judge me by this sickness and this broken heart. Don't judge me by the way I'm crying out. Don't judge me by the how I feel. All I know is I can't quit on God. You see, these, these so far and Brother E and his Elephaz and his friends, they were supposed to be there to comfort him. Supposed to be there. Been just a short time. Dog lost his children. He lost his sheep and his camel, his livelihood. His health was failing him. His marriage is on the rocks. He got this wife that's gone crazy talking about, won't you curse God and die? And you judging me? I'm in sin because now the enemies come against me. You see, these three jokers was being used by a spirit. And I've heard people preach about Job, but they don't preach about the fourth chapter that it was a spirit, a secret spirit. A spirit that entered in at the nighttime. A spirit that came in whispering and birds of feather.
us flock together. After all that Job went through, you mean to tell me that you didn't have enough compassion in your heart and enough softness and caring and your humanity was gone that you couldn't feel that this man just lost his child. He just lost his job and his wealth, his wealth everything overnight gone. Hallelujah. Imagine that you lose everything in one day and his friends didn't have enough compassion and humanity to love him past it. That's something. We have to be careful that we do not lose our humanity and compassion. Jesus was touched by the feeling of our infirmities because you see I'm in the fight for my life and I don't need anybody pronouncing me dead and saying I've been addiction and determining my eternal future I need somebody and discern that my life in the spirit somebody who can because I'm so tired on my behalf and rebuke the devil off of me. I need someone who can pray me through this. I need someone who can feel this heartache. I need someone who can help me with my son and help me with my daughter and help me. Don't let me quit. Don't let me quit. Don't let me quit. Now, to me, saints of God, don't sound like he's much of these were friends. Real friend. Don't sound like no friend to me. You see, there's a saying that says, I don't know if it was from Sun Tzu or Niccolo Machiavelli or Patrice. I know I got some gangsters up in here. Y'all ain't been saved your whole life. That might watch Michael Carloni and the Godfather Part 2. And he said this. He said, my father taught me many things. He taught me in this very room. And that is to keep your friends close. And your enemies closer. It seems to me that these three jokers weren't really friends that they what we would call in the 21st century frenemies have frenemies frenemies a frenemy is someone who seems to be a friend but takes every opportunity to cut you down hallelujah they tip around like they being honest and it's for your best interest but the design of their heart and their intent is to break you down and to assassinate your character huh? and to come against the God in you huh? you see a friend of me's their actions are to tear your life apart Maybe uh, y'all over here ain't got no frenemies, but maybe somebody over here know what a frenemy is. Let me see if I can talk to you. Uh, a frenemy is somebody uh, you allowed in your house and ate your food and slept in your bed and lent them money and they didn't borrow your car and wore your clothes uh, and now uh, they didn't turn against you. Uh, see, a frenemy is one. Uh, you didn't pick them up for church and fasted and prayed for their life uh, and God didn't bless them huh? but now that they got what they got huh? they want to turn against you you see we've allowed frenemies to become so close because they're good people we have history like being up around them and we people you didn't confide it in now all your business on Facebook and Twitter and Instagram and Snapchat. The only way the devil could take you down is you allowed him close enough to hit you. 
It's bad when people have the revelation of what the enemy's doing, but don't got enough God in them to make the enemy stop. Don't have enough compassion in them to back the devil off for you. They don't have enough compassion to say, baby, don't quit. Don't give up on God. Hold fast to your faith. Don't allow the enemy to take you down. It was a frenemy. A frenemy. Now, when we get to chapter 20, I laid the foundation of what Job was dealing with. He was dealing with frenemies. Saved frenemies. Who had godly intent with their mouth, but satanic attempt with their heart. How can you operate in two realms at the same time is when you still got one foot in the world and the other foot in the church. It was a friend of me. We no longer. Chapter 20. Here's where the, the text shift. And the shift says, when you read verse 12, it says there was a prophetic shift that took place. The one thing about gifts and callings is gifts and callings will work anywhere. They'll work anywhere. So here was Brother Zophar with this prophetic gift that now began to unveil what the enemy was doing. You see, we no longer are talking about what Job was talking about. I'm talking about today what the church is going through through uh, and here's what the devil is saying uh, you have been sweet in my mouth uh, why uh, because in Genesis 2 and 7 uh, we were formed from the dust of the earth uh, and his charge by God uh, was to eat the dust of the earth all the days of his life uh, you wonder why you're going through so much uh, you're wondering why hell has hit your house uh, you're wondering why your fight is so hard uh, I'm here to tell you don't quit uh, you just food for the enemy uh, he's a supposed to be attacking you huh? he wouldn't be a good devil huh? if he wasn't attacking you huh? all the attack is about huh? it's about God bringing you out huh? don't let them quit God huh? don't let them give up on their faith huh? all God wants huh? is for you to hold on to what he told you huh? hasn't he spoke a word huh? you just good there's a satisfaction the enemy has in knowing that he's taken a bite out of your life. Knowing that he's hit you so hard that you can't even lift your hands. Knowing huh, that you will not now. Huh, to the devil 
so now what he meant to eat and to swallow down no longer belongs to him it doesn't belong to him my praise is poison to the enemy he has verse 15 said he swallowed down riches and riches are more than money the word riches here means a valuable natural resource so I kept digging and I found out that the root word of riches is praise and praise translate into the word printium which means my praise has a price to it my praise has worth to it my praise costs me something my praise has value my praise is worth a wage my praise carries weight and all I'm trying to tell you huh is that the devil don't want your money huh the devil don't want your honey huh the devil don't want your job huh? the devil don't want your house huh? the devil don't want your car huh? what the devil wants huh? is what's worth something to God huh? that's why I told Jesus huh? why don't you bow down huh? and worship me huh? the devil is after your praise huh? the devil is after what carries weight huh? the devil is after something that means something to God huh? And God is about uh, to hit that joker uh, so hard uh, that his praise, uh, my praise, uh, which belong to God, uh, is about to come up. Uh, God is going after uh, the things that belong to him. Uh, that's why uh, he can't have your children. Uh, he can't have your house. Uh, he can't have your job. Uh, he can't have your marriage. Uh, he can't have your business. Uh, he can't have it uh, because the foundation uh, was built on praise how did I get here it was praise that opened the door it was praise that bought me from a long way it was praise that pushed me it was praise that delivered me it was praise that broke me it was praise that shook me all I had left was a praise all I had left was a thank you Jesus all I had left was a hallelujah Hallelujah. All I had left was a God I love you. All I had left was a hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, glory. I dare you to praise him. I dare you to praise him. I dare you to praise him. Don't quit. Don't quit, saints. Don't give up. Praise him. Praise him. Praise him through sickness. Praise him through heartache. Praise him through brokenness. Praise him through divorce. Praise him through heartache. Praise him. Praise him. Praise him. Praise him through depression. Praise him. Praise him. All you got left is something that's worth something. God's looking for praise. Don't bow down. Don't give it away. J. Moss says it. There's a praise on the inside that I can't keep to myself. There's a holler stirring up from the depths of my soul. So excuse me if I seem a little giddy or maybe strange. Praise is the way I say thank you. Thank you for delivering me. Thank you for breaking addiction. Thank you for tearing it down. Thank you for saving my family. Thank you for healing my body. Thank you for bringing me up. Thank you for giving me ministry. Thank you for healing my bishop. Thank you for healing my church. Thank you for healing my business. Thank you for healing my mind. Thank you. church the saints used to say raise your hands thank you Jesus 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 that's what God wants he wants a thank you all he wants is a thank you he said all this stuff ain't worth nothing to me all I want praise me praise me past your pain praise me past yourself put your flesh 
uh, to the side. Uh, put your worry uh, to the side. Uh, praise me. Uh, praise it. You want to back the devil off of you? Uh, praise God. Uh, you want to make him leave you alone? Uh, praise God. Uh, turn my money loose. Uh, praise God. Uh, turn my children loose. Praise God. Uh, turn my mama loose. Uh, praise God. Uh, turn my husband loose. Uh, praise God. Uh, turn my boss loose. Uh, praise God. Uh, turn my church loose. Uh, praise God. Uh, turn my prayer life loose. Uh, praise God. It's what I do. It's what I do. When I ain't got nothing left, I know how to praise God. I know how to praise Him through the pain. I know how to come up. Praise Him. and think about something God's done for you think about a time that all you had left was your praise all you had left was a thank you all you had left was hallelujah maybe it was a gunshot maybe it was OD maybe it was a drug maybe it was a car wreck thank you thank you thank you thank you thank you thank you I feel my help coming. Oh God, Lord, set my soul on fire and let it burn with the Holy Ghost. I feel my help. I feel my help. And here we go. God, I thank you. I thank you for healing these legs. I thank you for strengthening these muscles. I'm having a personal moment. I thank you. I can raise my hand. I thank you. your situation praise and pass your own self praise and pass your frenemies praise and pass the church hurt praise it what do you do what do you do when all you got left is your praise mama not there daddy not there husband not there the bishop not there first lady not there all you got left is what God didn't put in you to give back to him and all he's saying today I need what's worth something I need that praise you need a new kidney praise God you need a mind regulator praise God you need healing praise God see praise is more than money and cars riches is about more it's more it's more than riches because where I'm going the streets is paved with gold so all I gotta do is praise God now on the asphalt praise God on the cement because I got some gold streets coming. Saints of God, don't quit on God. Don't quit in this hour. Don't quit through this fight. Don't quit in this storm. Don't quit in this sickness. Cancer ain't got nothing on God. If I got cancer, cancer gonna learn how to praise God with me. If I got sickness, it's gonna learn to praise God with me. The tumors I got, gonna have to learn to praise God with me. The problems I got, gotta learn to praise God with me. Praise him, praise him, praise him. 
I just hear God saying praise me. If the people will praise me, I'll move for them. If the people will worship me, I'll move for them. I'll shift heaven and I'll shake earth to make it give up what belongs to the people. All you need is a praise. That's your weapon. That's your protection. That's your livelihood. That's your strength. It's your shield. And it's your buckler. It's your rocking. In the midnight hour, praise is all you need. I know I got some gangsters up in here. I double dog dare you to take a step out of your seat and praise God for what you need. To praise God for your healing. To praise God for your mind being regulated. To praise God for what he's going to do. Praise him till your ministry comes back. Praise him till your husband comes back. Praise him till your wife comes back. Praise him. Praise him. healing. I need a breakthrough. I need God to turn this around. I need a touch. I need an encounter. Y'all playing with God. Play with him if you want. I shut up. Huh? <laughs>